Hi, this is Sean Wildermuth with Coding Shorts. Today we're going to talk about the I disposable pattern. C Sharp is a managed language, and when we say managed, we mostly just mean memory managed. There's a lot of different resources that you may find that can't be managed just by memory. We can think about expensive resources like file handles, database connections, Windows handles, other things like that, that you're going to need to clean up on your own. And that's where the iDisposable pattern comes in. So I'm going to talk to you about deterministic destruction today. Let's take a look. So let's take a look at this pretty simple program I'm writing. I have just a console app that when it runs, I'm going to instantiate this valuable class that we'll look at in a minute. And it is just going to process some string, return some string that I can write out. Not going to do all that interesting of a thing. We look at the process here. It's just using a memory stream to do some encoding and decoding of information. Again, it's not important what it's doing, but it's important that inside of this class, I don't know about anything that might be a valuable resource, a file handle, a connection string to a database, a IO port, a window handle, who knows what. It's all from my perspective of using it here. I don't know anything about it, right? And so, in fact, when we run this, it does what we want. We put in Hello World. We get back Hello World, and everything seems fine, especially in this being a console app, because if we're leaking memory, the process is going to get torn down, and we're never going to know that. But in fact, we have a leak here, and a lot of you probably already noticed it, that we're using a stream here. And if we look at stream, I'm using F12 to go ahead and look at the definition of the memory stream class. We'll see that this doesn't look very interesting. Well, let's go down into its implementation. And we actually see I disposable. That's this magic interface. We actually also see I async disposable, which we'll talk about a little later. But I disposable is this interface that is essentially tagged onto stream to say, hey, you know what? This has resources that we need to have control over when they get destroyed. This is an indication when you're looking at something that it requires something special. And so here we can just use something called the using statement to do what's called deterministic deconstruction. By putting all of our code inside of a using statement, we're telling it that this object requires an I disposable. And if we change this to something like a new string, it should complain here because what does it say? String is not convertible to I disposable, therefore it can't be used. This using statement is specifically for things that support iDisposable. And what is it going to do? It's effectively putting in and using is the same. Let me go back. It's coming in here and saying stream.dispose. Saying, please clean up my mess here. The reason this is important is we want to determine when to get rid of resources that are finite. Again, back to window handles, database connections, etc. And so let's get rid of our dispose and go back to using the using statement, right? And so we're going to say var stream, and this is a scope. So you may need to do some things about if this needs to be exposed outside. But this pattern of having it around, including the return, simply says, okay, when the scope is gone, please call the I disposable for me. That's all this was really doing. And this is fine when you're just using local objects for a short amount of time. Streams are a common case here. But what if we wanted to say, this is going to be in a constructor instead, no parameters. And instead, we want this to be a field for stream, right? Got stream there. And this will continue to work, except that like before, we have a leak because this memory stream is going to live as long as the object lives. And we don't know when it's going to be cleaned up. In fact, no one is actually calling disposable for us. So one of the things you will see, and especially if you've come from other languages, you might want to use a finalizer, which is sort of C Sharp's version of a destructor. And so a finalizer takes the form of the tilde and then the name of the class. And this says, hey, call some code when the garbage collector is going to get rid of this object. And so I can go, okay, I'll just go ahead 
case it's not cleaned up here, I'll just go ahead and say, let's close it and stream dot dispose, right? That's a clean thing to do. We can say is valuable. In fact, over here, let's just use console dot right line and say closing and disposing. So we can see when this actually happens, right? We're just using this finalizer to go. Let's just make sure that if things aren't cleaned up, we're going to handle it in the destructor. So let's run that. Notice it never happens. And in a console app, it never happens because there's never memory pressure. And so the finalizer never gets called. It never gets called because when the process starts to tear itself down, it goes, oh, you know what? This isn't worth it. Let's just destroy that whole section of memory. We're not even going to call any of this code because we want to exit quickly. In something longer lived like a web server, you might notice that this valuable eventually gets called, but it's eventually. We don't have any control over when this actually happens. And that's an important idea here. And so if we want to control when it happens, and let's say this stream is being used by more parts of our application, but once the valuable object is done, we want to get rid of it, what do we do? We, of course, we implement the interface, uh, disposable. Let's go ahead and just implement that interface simply so we can kind of talk about how that's done. All it does is define an interface called iDispose. But remember, the more important part is this interface that tells the user of this class that there is something in here that is more than just memory. Now, remember, we're talking about unmanaged resources. So these are resources that aren't managed by C Sharp itself. Again, things like file handles, window handles, database connections are the common ones, but you can find other resources that might be important to handle knowing when they are destroyed. Because what we're talking about is deterministic destruction. We want to know when and control when this destruction happens. So in the case of this, now that we have dispose, what can we do? Well, let's go ahead and just move all our code here into the dispose. And unsurprisingly, we can then say using, because now the valuable includes iDisposable. Let's move this in the scope, or we could even do this. We could say var result equals empty string, and then assign the empty string, and then write it out. Again, this is a scope like any other, so you're going to need to handle what's in and out of that scope. Let's go ahead and run this again. And we can see here, closing and disposing was, in fact, called. Because after this using statement, but before this last write line happened, what happened? It called the dispose for us. Well, that's great. We can finally sort of take control over that lifetime, and that is good. But what if the user of the class didn't use the using statement? What do you do then? Let's go back to value, and one of the common patterns here is actually say stream equals null. Then in the finalizer, you can still check if stream does not equal null, or we're in C sharp nine now, so is not null. And what can we do? We can call dispose. And so this is sort of belts and suspenders. If they're calling dispose, great. If not, then eventually the dispose will be called when the object is collected. So you don't end up having stray database or file handles sitting out there unused. And this is good, but it's not great. We still have a couple of issues here. One is that we're going to want a member here. I'll call is disposing. And this is mostly to handle the race condition of disposing is in the middle of being called, and then the finalizer actually gets called. And you don't want to get sort of in the middle of that. So you're just going to say if is disposing, sorry, if not disposing, then is disposing equals true. And then we can go ahead and go on with the disposing. And so dispose can be called here because it can't end up being called at the same time. And at the same time, this won't call it because stream is in. It sort of protects you in both situations. And so in that way, you can have both the belt and suspenders to make sure this is disposed. And again, handling this well is a pattern that, in fact, you can see in Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code, there's actually a pattern for doing most of this for you. The last piece I'll talk about is actually also supporting, which is a common pattern, I async disposable. And this interface is very similar. The difference here is it's returning a value task. And so what this is going to allow you to do is if you have operations that are asynchronous, you allow that dispose to happen without tying up the thread. Now for us, 
We can actually do the same thing here because we don't want them both called. But in the case of stream, we might have a stream.flush async. You know, let's say that was part of the closing function was to asynchronously close it. Let's come back up here and say stream.flush, right? Well, in this case, we don't want to take up that thread extra, so we could actually say await flush and make this async, of course. Now, I could also here say await stream dispose async, because, of course, it supports it as well. And when you call dispose async, you're also going to want to configure the await to say false, because we want this in case of failure, not to throw an exception, but to just go away. We're going to assume that it's going to try to do its best to be disposable. Now, what happens here in this using statement is this is only going to call the I disposable. It's never going to call the I async disposable. But when I async disposable is there, you can opt into it by saying await using. Now, this works normally inside of an asynchronous method by saying this is an asynchronous disposal and will opt into the I async dispose method as well. So that's an important discerning. And so it is your responsibility as you write classes that consume resources that are disposable that you dispose them as well. Now, one of the ideas here is what if I'm using something that's very special that doesn't support I disposable, but I'm really doing something really low level. In that case, you're going to want to clean up your own unmanaged resources. So imagine if you're doing interop with Win32 and you needed to do like a memory page file. It's going to be up to you to actually call those underlying things that dispose of it. But it's important that even though C Sharp is handling the garbage collection, managing the memory for us, that it's not going to manage the sort of resources that we may not think of as just memory. And it could be any of the kinds of things I've been talking about. Thanks for joining me on this Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildenmuth, as usual. Thanks for coming.